Hello, I'm Bruce Yang, and today in Homemade Science, I thought we'd take a look at slide whistles. Now, it's really a fun instrument if you're the one that's playing it, and it's kind of annoying if you have to listen to them, but there's a lot of good science in them, so I thought today we'd take a closer look. <coughs> now, slide whistle is actually an old toy that's been around for years and years. There are quite a few of them that are available commercially. In fact, this metal one's a very nice one. There's also one that's patterned after a uh, pipe organ, which actually has the notes inscribed here on the uh, slide for it. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now let's try this one real quick. I'll take it from a C to a C. It really does have a nice tone to it. Now here's another one that's sold commercially. Well, as you can see, some of them work better than others. Well, in my class we study sound, and as part of their lesson, I actually had my students make a musical instrument. Now, when we looked at wind instruments, we found there were a couple variables that would change the note. We could simply blow harder. We could go from an open pipe to a closed pipe. Or we could take that closed pipe and simply make it shorter. That's what our slide's for. Now, I've made several examples of these, so let's take a look at some of them, and then I'll show you how to make one. Now, a good place to start is simply looking at the whistle itself. We know that if we have a short tube that's open, we'll have a very high note. And if we seal it, well... If we make it longer... And longer... We keep getting longer and longer. Now, a slide whistle simply adjusts the length of that enclosed tube to adjust the pitch. So, if we want to change the length of the chamber inside, there's a couple different ways we can do it. And one of the simplest ways is to use a column of water. So, if I take this and I immerse it down in that as I'm blowing, well, let's see what happens. Work pretty good. Let's see if we can do it with this longer piece. <laughs> that's fun, but that's a bit inconvenient, so let's look at some other ideas. The nice thing about these clear ones is it allows you to see the chamber inside. Here's a squared one, and it's got a squared off piston to it. And then I have several round ones. Now let's give the clear ones a quick test first. Here's that square one. And the smaller round one. And the larger round one. I think this one has the best tone of the three. The clear PVC is the same size as the white PVC. It's just a little bit more expensive. Now, this is one of my favorite whistles. It's made from two pieces of bamboo. I simply took uh, a larger piece of bamboo and cut it off to the length that I wanted. I smoothed off this knot here. And then had a second piece that fits inside as the slide. I think what I like so much about this piece is that the materials were locally grown. Here's another one that I made out of wood. This was simply a 2x4 that I drilled a hole through with a long bit. Now, some of my pieces did start out as whistles. This was actually made from a pool toy. It looked something like this, and if you were in a swimming pool, you would stick this end into some water and draw back on the plunger, and then you could squirt somebody or just play with it. Play with that long stream of water. This was the original nozzle. 
I simply cut that off and formed a new mouthpiece for it. Now you may have noticed a difference in some of these designs. In this case, the pipe goes straight right to the end of it, while in this case, the pipe has a coupling over the end. The difference is how the air is delivered to this sharp edge that's right here. Now, both of these designs have something in common, and that's a plug called a fipple, and it sits inside the end of the pipe. So as you can see, there are several variations that we can use for that mouthpiece. Now I have a piece of PVC pipe here. Let's go ahead and make one for ourselves. I'm going to start with a piece of sandpaper and a wooden block, and I'm simply going to take this and start rubbing it against this one end and try and file it down some. Well, that only took about a minute for me to get it flat enough. This will actually be the passage for the air to flow through inside that coupling. Here I'm going to use a quarter inch bit to drill a hole through that flat down area. There we go. A little trouble here. And I'm simply going to put the drill on an angle to make that edge a little bit sharper. Work it back a little bit for it to make it wider. Next I want to clean up those edges. So I've cut a nail file in half. And I'm going to simply use that to sand down the inside and the outside of this hole. I'll keep sanding this on one side or the other until I get it nice and sharp. That looks pretty good. Now that we have that ready to go, the next thing we need to do is add that fipple. Now I can use a cork stopper if I can find one that fits. It's got to be nice and snug. We'll put that over the top. That works pretty well. Or if I can't find one out of cork, I can simply make one by sharpening the edges of the same size pipe a little bit. And I'm simply going to use that to cut out a piece of foam. Make a couple turns here so it's all the way through. And I'll use something to push it out. And there's our new plug. Put it in the end of the pipe and give it a try. Next up, now we need that plunger. And that's simply going to be a dowel rod that's a little bit smaller than the interior of the pipe. And if it doesn't fit snug enough, well, we can add a little bit of tape to it. And that's going to make it fit just a little bit better. All right, let's give that a try. works pretty good. Now I do have a slight improvement for this end that goes into the cylinder. I'm going to use a couple small pieces of packing foam, a washer and a screw, and I'll simply put those through the packing foam here. And then I'm going to screw this into the end of that dowel rod. There we go. Tighten it down a little bit with a screwdriver. Now what I want to do is cut it down so that I get a nice, tight, snug fit inside that pipe. Now let's try this. Now let's give that another try. I think that works a little bit better. Now I do have some other variations on how to make this whistle. Another possibility is to cut a gap all the way from the edge of the pipe to that sharp edge. This is going to provide the passageway for the air to go through. Here we can see the end of it here. And here we can see it inside that coupling. I'll use a hacksaw to cut two slots into the piping. There we go. Should be about right. And next I'll use my drill to uh, cut that piece off. If I work it back and forth a little bit, I should be able to get that piece out of there. 
And when I finally get it out, I'll use that nail file to give me a nice sharp edge. Well, that looks pretty good. Let's put in a foam stopper. Now let's try it with the coupling. That works pretty good. Now what about if we want to make one without this piece? If we look at these whistles, you'll notice the air's got to flow inside that tube. So let's make one of these. I'll start with a PVC pipe, and I'm simply going to take a hacksaw and cut a small groove down into it, and then across it, and take that section out. I'll use a file to sharpen the edge once again, both on the inside and the outside. Now this piece also needs that fipple, and we're going to use a foam stopper. Here we go. And it fits nice and snug. But for the air to flow through, I need to flatten down the one side of it. So I'll simply rub it against some sandpaper, take off some of the foam. That looks pretty good. And let's put it in the end of the pipe. And here's what it looks like. Now once you're satisfied that it works, you can glue it in place and then cut an angle on it. That's going to make it easier to blow on it. Here we can see the end view. And here's the one that I made in that plastic pull toy. Now in my search for making these swizzles out of interesting materials, I found that I could make one out of a carrot. I carefully drilled a hole all the way through it. We used a knife to cut down and then across to give me that sharp edge. Here we can see a closer view of it. And I took a small carrot and cut out my fipple. And once again, I had to flatten it so that it would give me an air passage inside the carrot. Now let's try it. All right, so we have a tone on it. Let's try it with a slide. All right, well, there's our slide whistle made out of a carrot. It's not the best sounding one, but it is the only one that I could eat. <laughs> well, I think by now you get the idea that there's a variety of ways that we can make these slide whistles. But that's only half the story. What I'd really like to take a look at is the science behind them. And we're going to do that in a future video when we take a look at open and closed pipes. But for now, I'd like to thank you for stopping in and come back and see me again. Okay, bye.